It's noon on your Monday. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Rob Hughes. It is a second consecutive Monday night football game for the Chiefs because of COVID-19. The Super Bowl champs will be taking on the New England Patriots at Arrowhead tonight. Well, this is this video. The Patriots flight arrived at KCI about an hour ago. Of course, it's very unusual for a team to arrive on game day, but a positive COVID-19 test from Patriots quarterback Cam Newton and also a Chiefs backup quarterback, but put this week in jeopardy. Game Steins at Martin Augustine is at Arrowhead with new details. And for the first time, this game seems all but certain to take place tonight. A couple of big hurdles had to be cleared in order for the game to be played tonight here at Arrowhead Stadium. The first one, both the Chiefs and the Patriots had to test all of their players one more time for COVID-19. The good news is all those tests coming back negative. The second hurdle, the Patriots had to get here. You can see here in these pictures, the Patriots loading up for flights early this morning to get here to Kansas City. Only the Patriots are taking two airplanes. Why? Well, on one plane is a bulk of their travel party. The second plane is a group of 20 or so of the Patriots who had the closest contact with Cam Newton. Now, this is important because Cam Newton tested positive for COVID-19, and as the starting quarterback, he had the most contact with the most players. We see him in warm-ups. We see it's, mm -hmm. he's not just talking to the other quarterbacks. He is all over that field. Um, and that was obviously a concern. So all those close contacts have to be traced now and followed very closely. The Patriots arriving here in Kansas City mid to late morning. The plan for them, they're going to a hotel. They're spending a few hours there, and then they'll be coming right out here to Arrowhead Stadium. So a whirlwind day for the Patriots in order to play a game tonight. Reporting from Arrowhead Stadium, Martin Augustine, KBC 9 News. Meanwhile, Chiefs players were relieved to hear that all tests came back negative this morning. Tyron Matthew tweeted simply, quote, thank you, God. Meanwhile, Patriots quarterback Cam Newton had a message for fans as he sits at home instead of playing today. Newton posted on Instagram saying in part, I will take this time to get healthy and self-reflect on the other amazing things that I should be grateful for. Well, if you're going to the game tonight, the Chiefs are going to have plenty of safety protocols in place. 16,000 fans will be spread out throughout the stadium. And again, parking will only be open to ticket holders this year. You cannot buy a parking pass at the gate. You also have to buy it online ahead of time. Tailgating will be allowed, but you're going to have to stay at your own car. Also inside the stadium, again, like last time, no bags are allowed, not even the clear ones. Face masks are required, except when you're eating or drinking. And also all transactions in the stadium will be cashless. And once again, that game is set to kick off at 6.05 at Arrowhead. Ryan Hoyer will be starting at quarterback for the Patriots in place of Cam Newton. We have also learned that the Patriots will be without their starting running back. So uh, Michael was ruled out this morning with a quad injury. All right, it's 12.03. Now checking in with Nick for a look at our afternoon forecast. Hey, Nick, beautiful day in store. It is, Rob. I mean, lots of sunshine, a clear sky. Uh, the difference being the wind. The wind has really picked up here. 68 degrees. We got a south breeze at 18 miles per hour. Gusts up to about 25 miles per hour. So it's very possible that we do have wind gusts that climb up to about 30, 35 miles an hour. Here's the 70s there in Lawrence and in Ottawa. Here in Kansas City, 68 degrees. Cool spot there in Liberty at 59, 63 in Marshall and 63 in Sedalia. Wind gusts right now in about that 20 to 25 mile per hour range. Occasionally, it could gust up to 30 to 35 through the next 12 hours. And our first alert day planner, lots of sunshine here with a high of about 74 to 75 degrees. And then this evening, once the sun sets, the wind will slowly start to die down, but there's still going to be a south breeze. Our temperatures dropping into the 60s. You notice that time as well as during the Chiefs games. If you are going to Arrowhead, a little bit of a breeze, 60s, so the wind chill values might dip into the upper 50s. We got a couple extra layers on. That's nothing new for football in October, but we do have summer like days ahead. I'm going to show you when the temperatures climb into the 80s, Rob. It's coming up. Sounds good. Thanks so much, Nick. Well, new at noon, White House Press Secretary Kayla McCainy says that she has tested positive for COVID-19. The latest White House staff are now positive for the virus. Meanwhile, President Trump is at Walter Reed Medical Center for a fourth day amid conflicting messages over the severity of his current condition. ABC's Elizabeth Schulze has the latest. President Trump defying CDC guidelines during a surprise drive-by past his supporters at the hospital. Wearing a mask in the back seat, the president, who health experts believe is likely still contagious with COVID-19, putting Secret Service officers in the SUV at risk. A physician at Walter Reed not involved with the president's treatment reacting today on Good Morning America. I don't know what the benefits of this political stunt were, but I do know what the risks were. And my concern is that perhaps the Secret 
service agents that were inside don't know the full risk of what they uh, were up against there. The White House saying in a statement appropriate precautions were taken, including PPE. The movement was cleared by the medical team as safe to do. But the CDC says any movement of a hospitalized COVID patient outside their room should only be done for medically essential purposes. The president's drive-by coming just minutes after he tweeted out a video saying this. I learned a lot about COVID. I learned it by really going to school. This is the real school. This isn't the let's read the book school. And I get it. Doctors say President Trump is responding well to the antiviral treatment remdesivir and a steroid, but there are lingering questions and confusion about his condition. White House physician Sean Conley saying the president could leave the hospital as soon as today, yet admitting he gave Trump supplemental oxygen twice. I was concerned for possible rapid progression of the illness. I recommended the president we try some supplemental oxygen, see how he'd respond. This after he repeatedly dodged questions on Saturday about whether the president needed oxygen. And was once again evasive when asked about lung damage the president may have suffered as a result of his COVID-19 infection coupled with the fact that he was given the steroid dexamethasone, which can weaken the immune system, and the National Institutes of Health recommends be given to patients in severe or critical need. Yeah, so we're tracking all of that. Um, there's some expected findings, but nothing of uh, any major clinical concern. There is also confusion about when the president contracted the virus. Sources telling ABC News President Trump received a positive result from a rapid test before he said this on Fox News Thursday. So whether we quarantine or whether we have it, I, I don't know. President Trump has been tweeting from the hospital this morning, mostly about his reelection campaign. With just 29 days until the election, Joe Biden's out on the campaign trail today in Florida. Biden campaign says it is open to moving forward with the upcoming presidential debates. And following President Trump's diagnosis last week, a new poll is out that says nearly three out of every four Americans doubt that President Trump took seriously the threat of coronavirus. We're going to break down the poll coming up in our next half hour. And right now, dozens of protesters are camped out on the front lawn of City Hall. Today is day four for the camp, which was sparked by a local woman's viral arrest. Deja Stallings, the pregnant woman seen in the video, is being this video here being arrested by a KCPD officer. Well, after months of demonstrations against police brutality, these protesters say that they're setting up what they're now calling the People's City, and that is the next step towards justice. And she is asking for justice not only for herself, but her unborn daughter. Donations are keeping these protesters fed and warm, and volunteers are there at all times to keep them safe. They say they will not leave Kansas City, Missouri City Hall until Mayor Quint Lucas fires at Kansas City, Missouri Police Chief Rick Smith. And right now, we are tracking coronavirus case numbers for you on both sides of the state line. Here are the latest numbers on your screen. Missouri is reporting 1,400 new cases since Thursday. Numbers from Kansas show 1,300 cases since Wednesday. One way to monitor the transmission of the virus is the positivity rate you see here. Right now, 17% of tests are coming back positive in Missouri. It is 15% in Kansas. The positivity rate in both states is more than three times the national rate. Meanwhile, more Metro students are back in the classroom in the Blue Valley School District. All students who registered for in person learning are back in the classroom in some capacity today. Elementary school students will now be learning in person five days a week. Middle and high schoolers have begun a hybrid learning model. They'll be in classrooms two days a week on an alternating schedule. Also in Lee Summit, kids in fourth through 12th grade are headed back to school part time this week. Districts also in a hybrid model. Students in pre-K through third grade and least summit have been back in class full time since September 8th. Well, today pre-K through second graders also switched to hybrid learning in the Shawnee Mission School District. Next week, students all the way up through sixth grade will be going back to class part time. Transition to all in person learning for these students starts in two weeks on October 9th. All right, it's time now to check in with Nick for a look at our afternoon 70s. Nick, beautiful for this fall day. Yeah, Rob, in fact, today is going to be the coolest day out of the next ooh, seven here on our first alert. Nine day forecast and windy too. There'll be a south wind about 20 gusts up to 30 miles per hour and then summer like afternoons ahead. You still might have a bit of a fall chill in the mornings, but if we look at the afternoon high temperatures beginning Tuesday all the way through Sunday. We got upper 70s and 80s with the warmest day coming in on Wednesday. Sunshine for Sporting KC, a high of 84 and room to run there. This weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, high temperatures in the lower 80s, morning lows warming the upper 50s and low 60s there for Sporting Kansas City there on Wednesday for the Chiefs on Sunday. So if you need a long stretch of dry, mild weather, whether it be for yard work or maybe some outdoor house upgrades or repairs, 
this would be the week to do it. Also yard work big time next week. It does look like we head into a cooler, wetter weather pattern with a cold front coming in Monday, Tuesday. That's our next chance of showers and possibly even a few thunderstorms that'll knock our highs down in the lower 70s by the middle of next week. Nick, thanks so much. Meanwhile, the firefight continues over in California as the glass fire rages on what crews are doing to contain the fire and how residents are preparing for the worst. And today, the Supreme Court is bracing for a turbulent new term, but factors are at play in how the justices will work amid the pandemic. And an indoor pool is opening to the public today, the new amenities and how you can stay safe while enjoying a swim. Stay connected with the facts that will move us forward. You're watching KNBC 9 News, leading the way. Over California, firefighters are still battling a massive wildfire. It's dubbed the Glass Fire. Better weather conditions and visibility let air tanker pilots drop tank after tank of fire retardant on the flames over the weekend. You see them in action there. Well, one nearby homeowner says that she's ready to leave her home if she has to, but for now, she has a front row seat to that firefight. Their job, what they're doing, but when it comes to your home and you see it so close, it's, it's a different story, but it's a pretty cool show. Cal Fire says more than 16,000 firefighters are battling 16 fires across the state. Well, fires have scorched more than 4 million acres across California this year alone. Well, the Supreme Court is facing one of its most difficult terms in decades as high profile cases and political battles spill onto the justices schedule. Matt Pritchard is in Washington with more. So much of the uncertainty of this term ties back to the legal icon after Justice Ginsburg passed away in September. 
Her death kicked off a rapid nomination and confirmation process as Republicans look to cement a 6-3 majority on the court, putting forward Judge Amy Coney Barrett to fill the empty seat. And while that set off partisan sparring across the street on Capitol Hill, the justices also face difficult cases like religious rights and LGBTQ discrimination, grand jury material from Robert Mueller's Russia probe, and the fate of the Affordable Care Act. Now, the court could also be brought into the election conversation as well, potentially deciding any challenges if needed. In Washington, I'm Matt Pritchard reporting. And just like the end of last term, due to the pandemic, the justices hold oral arguments via telephone and allow the public to listen live. It's something that up until last summer had never been done before. We have new details this afternoon about a weekend fire at a senior living facility. The state fire marshal is now stepping in to try and figure out what happened. On Saturday night at the Temple Heights Manor in Raytown, one person died and several people had to be taken to the hospital for smoke inhalation. Meanwhile, we have a traffic alert to tell you about out of Platte County. MoDOT crews have closed down the I-29 southbound ramp to 64th Street for the next 10 days. They'll be working on a road realignment improvement project. The closure will be around the clock until October 15th. You are asked to find a different route. Meanwhile, Sporting Kansas City got a big win over the weekend, but the team will have to move forward without one of its star players. Alan Polito scored twice Saturday to lead Sporting to a 2-1 victory over Houston. While Polito has been called up to Mexico's national team to play in two friendlies in the Netherlands this week, we last played for his national team in 2018 and the 2014 World Cup. Sporting Kansas City, who plays this Wednesday at home against Chicago, says Polito could miss up to five games. Through a translator, Polito says that he's looking forward to joining his countrymen. Yes, it was a personal goal to play for Mexico again and represent my country. All the hard work and practice, I really want to thank my teammates. Without them, it wouldn't be possible. I'm happy to play for my country again and chosen to play in this match. All right, well, it is time now to vote for this week's KBC 9 and Hy-Vee High School football game of the week. This week's games include Blue Valley North versus Blue Valley Northwest, Platte County versus Winnetonka.